meeting of the uh, Committee on Labor, Employment and Human Resource Development, joined with the Committee on Social Justice, Welfare and Rural Development is now called to order. Today we will be uh, discussing two clusters of the bills that intend to provide assistance and support certain sectors of our society, indigent job seekers and construction workers. The Kabalikat Sahana Poy Act seeks to provide indigent job applicants a 20% discount or waiver in securing, in securing certain pre-employment documents issued by government agencies. On the other hand, the Construction Workers Insurance Act mandates employers of construction workers to provide them with accident and life insurance coverage for work-related injuries, accident and death. Uh, while we are still awaiting for uh, Senator Tulfo to provide record, we will just uh, continue. The... Uh, We'll first start with the Kabalikat Sahanap Boy Act. The pre-employment requirements needed to be secured by job applicants are not only numerous but also costly. Dagdag pa dito ang oras at karagdagan gastusin tulad ng pamasahe na kailangan gugulin upang makakuha ng mga nasabing dokumento. Bago pa man sumweldo aplikante, kailangan niya maglaan ng humigit kumulang sa libong piso bilang pambayad sa mga dokumento nito. For instance, NBI clearance costs 155 pesos and police clearance is at 150 pesos. The Certificate of Live Birth and Certificate of Marriage issued by the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA is at 155 pesos each. The transcript of records from state universities and colleges ranges from 50 to 100 per page. The Certificate of Eligibility from Civil Service Commission costs 100 pesos while the Unified Multipurpose ID or UMID from the Social Security System or Government or GSIS is pegged at 200 pesos. In 2019, RA 11261 or the First Time Job Seekers Assistance Act was signed into law. Ang batas na ito nagsasaad na, na ang mga pre-employment requirements na inisyo ng mga sangay ng pamalaan ay makukuha ng libre ng mga kababayan natin na first-time job seeker o unang beses pa lamang nagtatrabaho. Ngayon ay nakikita na natin ang magandang resulta ng batas na ito. Nais din natin ibigay ang ganitong privileyo sa ating mga kababayan na higit na nangangailangan. Ang Kabalikat sa Hanap Boy Act seeks to give indigent job seekers 20% discount and waived fee for pre-employment requirements issued by various government agencies. Ito po ay malaking tulong para sa higit na limang milyong poor households na kabilang sa listahan, listahan ng Department of Social Welfare and Development at sa higit na apat na milyong individual na, kasapi, na kabilang sa Pantawid Pamilya Program o yung tinatawag na Four Peace. Ang layunin ng panukalang batas na ito ay hindi lamang upang matul matulungan na mabawasan ang gastusin ng ating mga indigent job seekers, ngunit upang gawin itong unang hakbang para magkaroon sila ng trabaho at maitaguyod ang kanilang pamilya. In the long run, this measure will ease help the unemployment and underemployment rate in the country and ultimately empower our indigent kababayans to become productive contributors to our economy. Uh, all right, uh, Komsek, can you please acknowledge the our resource persons present today? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our resource persons invited by the committee are the following. Those uh, attending on regarding Kabalikat Sahana Boy Act, uh, the various government agencies from the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Ms. Sheila Merlantaka. Good morning, Mr. Chair. From the Bureau of Local Employment. From the Department of Health, we have Dr. Mark Anthony Leviste. Good morning, Mr. Chair. From the Commission on Higher Education, Ms. Yuri M. Castro. Good morning, po, Mr. Chair. From the National Bureau of Investigation, Supervising Agent Ruji Devera. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Together with the Special Investigator Mardu Baltasar. Good morning, Mr. Chair. From the Philippine National Police, we have Police Brigadier General Noel Sandoval, Executive Officer, DIDM. Good morning, Professor. From the National 
Anti-Poverty Commission. We have Ms. Maria Laarni Marin. Morning, Mr. Chair. From the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, Director Brain Masweng. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Present. Together with Mr. Angelo Salidao. Uh, regarding the Construction Workers Insurance Act, to your right, Mr. Chairman, from the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Anthony, Attorney Patrice Jamin Baron from the Employees' Compensation Commission. Good morning, Good morning, Mr. Chair. Together with Ms. Jennifer Obien. Good morning, Mr. Chair. From the Department of Public Works and Highways, we have Undersecretary Anne Charlene Lapus of uh, Legal Services. From the Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines, or SIA, an attached agency of the Department of Trade and Industry, we have the Executive Director, Ms. Ophelia Usigan. Good morning, sir. From the Insurance Commission, we have Attorney Camille Medina. And we have Assistant Secretary Naldo Cancio from the National Economic Development Authority. Good morning, sir. From the Philippine Con Constructors Association Incorporated, Mr. Aljun Valenzuela, the Chief of Staff and member of ECOP. Good morning, everyone. From the Philippine Insurers and Reinsurers Association Incorporated, or PIRA, Ms. Arlene Kalimag. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Together with Mr. Alexander Pablo. Good morning, Mr. Chair. We are... Uh, uh, still awaiting the arrival of the representatives of the Department of Migrant Workers and the Philippine Statistics Authority. Mr. Chairman, we also invited representatives from the various leagues, the League of, League of Cities, the League of Municipalities, and the League of Mga Barangay, but no one has uh, confirmed their attendance. That is all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Committee Secretary. I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Rafi Tulfo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. We will, first, we will discuss the bill itong Kabalikat sa Hanapway Act before we proceed to the other uh, uh, bill, the Construction Workers Insurance Act. Any? Oh. Okay. Yeah, um, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Chair uh, for the opportunity of uh, being here and uh, being able to speak about the two bills that are being tackled today. Uh, napakalaking bagay po ito, Mr. Chair, lalo na po sa kung pagbabasihan po yung mga karanasan ko sa uh, aking programa na kung saan marami sa ating mga kababayan yung mga may hirap, uh, ang isa sa mga problema na encounter nila, uh, pagamat gustong gusto nila magkaroon ng trabaho, kaya lang pag sila ay nag apply eh wala po silang sapat na pera para sa mga requirements. So napakaganda po ito, itong 20% discount na may bibigay sa kanila. And this will encourage them to look for a job na dahil malaking diskwento rin po itong 20% na makakaltas doon sa pagbayad ng mga requirements. And then dito po sa uh, Construction Workers Insurance Act, marami din po akong karanasan dito na kung saan uh, yung mga construction workers na nababalian, nahuhulog sa building, uh, construction site, nasusugatan. And then uh, yung pong... Uh, construction company, wala hong pambayad sa gamutan. In uh, worst uh, case scenario na mamatay po yung uh, construction worker, wala hong anay bibigay kahit singko yung construction company dahil eh, sila po fly by night. So, this will eliminate fly by night companies kapag nirequire na po natin na sa batas na lahat ng uh, uh, construction companies na magkaroon ng insurance para kapag may nangyari sa mga construction workers, eh, sila po yung mababayaran na. Kasi sa present situation, eh, lumalapit kung kanin-kanino ito mga construction workers para meron mag-shoulder ng kanilang hospital bills, mag-shoulder ng kanilang mga gamutan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Tulfo. Any other, uh, meron ba ko yung opening statement? Representatives from DOLE, DMW, do you have any opening statement? Yes, Mr. Chair. Right. Um, for the Department of Labor and Employment, allow me our initial position for this bill. So the, um, the department warmly supports the initiative of the Senate to provide the 20% discount for the indigent um, um, people. 
The department comments that the, this legislature measures considering its overall objectives and corresponding benefits extended to the indigent or poor job applicants. The objectives and corresponding benefits recognizes the inherent disadvantages among the underprivileged at the onset of their pre-employment journey. Financial costs related to obtaining pre-employment documents constitute additional layer that unduly prohibit the movement towards work opportunities. This measure will elevate indigent or the poor job seekers from such situation, as well as the reallocation of their resources to other necessary and basic needs of the family. From a broader perspective, the same will help them to foster an environment that motivates them to search for jobs that will help improve not only themselves but also for their families. Likewise, it will improve the quality of their life and make them more self-reliant and productive members of the community. The enactment of this policy is in its nature the appropriate and relevant in view in lingering high unemployment and underemployment and steadily rising inflation, which may result in higher poverty incidence. The department believes that having decent and productive as well as maximizing and increasing their employability and expand access to employment opportunities is the real term and sustainable solution to poverty. As such, it is imperative to really assist them and in whatever we can do for them. While these legislative measures share the same objectives, we truly um, believe the importance and accordingly we support, the department support these measures. That will be all, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, Sheila Lantaka. Yes, uh, representative from the DMW, Madam Ba? Neda, are you, what are your thoughts of uh, this bill? Thank you, Mr. Chen. Good morning to the members. Uh, we will be submitting our official position paper, Mr. Chair, but uh, offhand we'd like to express our support uh, to the uh, provisions of the bill. So we believe that they are uh, aligned with the strategy outlined in the Philippine Development Plan, particularly with respect to increasing the income earning ability and the uh, strengthening the employment facilitation services of our government. I mean, we look forward to working with the committee to enhancing some of the provisions of the bills, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right. Uh, when can we receive your position paper? Uh, by next week, Mr. Chair. Next week? Holy week na? Early After Holy week. week. After Holy Week. Okay, thank you. All right. Sir. Any other wishes to uh, share the, your thoughts uh, with regard to this uh, particular bill? So. All right, Mr. Chair, uh, for yes. yes, for the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, we wish to express our full support to the passage of uh, the bill, and uh, we we just want to register that the NCIP also is issuing uh, certificates. Although uh, the NCIP issues uh, free uh, and we do not charge uh, the issuance of our certificates, may we ask that it also be included, in, particularly in Section 3 of the bill. We uh, are issuing... Can you repeat it? Who, who should be included? Uh, the NCIP, actually. The? We are issuing also certificates of... Uh, certificate of affirmation of tribal membership, although right. it's free. Mm -hmm. We also issue a certificate of affirmation of uh, uh, indigenous uh, mandatory representatives. All right. So we will be uh, uh, submitting our proposal. All right. Mr. Can you Chair. submit after Holy Week, please? Yes. All right. Yes, Mr. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Senator Tulfo. Mayroon katanungan sa ating dole in relation to this bill that we are tackling now. Ano ba usually yung mga requirements na hinihingi ng isang employer sa isang uh, aplikante? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. It's a regular job. 
Okay. For a regular job, um, the employer look into the following item, um, items or documents. So number one, they have should a uh, government issued um identification card. So meron naman po tayong listahan ng mga valid identification IDs. And next, we also are encouraged na bigyan din sila ng SSS or GSIS for case of um, government um, employees. And then we also encourage them na magkaroon ng NBI or police clearance for any um, proper background for their identity. So may iba din po tayo na hinihingi like birth certificate, marriage certificate. So yun po yung ating mga usual requirements na hinihingi for purposes of identifying lang yung ating applicant. Okay, meron ba tayong standard na uh, inilalatag para doon sa mga regular job applicants na dapat sundin ng lahat ng mga employers na nag-hire ng mga regular employees? Kasi there are times eh, pinahirapan, halimbawa ayaw talaga ng employer doon sa aplikante eh, kung ano ang mga hiniging requirements kahit na hindi naman dapat. So there should be like one standard requirements for all regular uh, applicants na dapat i-impose na hindi na pwedeng lumampas ba dyan. Yes, Mr. Chair, um, we recognize the intention po for having the standard or uniform sets of requirements. Mm. Meron naman po tayong binibigay na guidelines on that. However, we also recognize din po kasi na merong mga industries um, na humihingi ng additional requirements based on their needs. But nevertheless, yung ating minimum standards should also protect yung ating mga job seekers, like the identification and yung mga social protection services that should be um, um, provided to them po. Okay, uh, ito yung mga usual na hinihingi sa mga regular job applicants na na-research ko. NBI clearance, barangay clearance, mm -hmm. certificate, police clearance, medical certificate, right? Yes po. Bakit kinakailangan pang hingian ng isang babae na nag-apply ng marriage certificate kung siya ay may asawa? O kung siya ay, uh, say, may family na? Why is it needed? Um, not necessarily. Uh, I mean, sir, the marriage certificate is for purposes of setting the status, yung civil status po ng ating worker. Um, siguro kung hinihingi man po ito is for the purpose lang po ng identification, but not necessary for purposes of discrimination. Well, kung ako natanawin, hindi na dapat. Sapat ko identification pinag-usapan, meron tayong NBI clearance, may barangay clearance, birth certificate, police clearance. So ba't kinakailangan pang hingi ng marriage certificate? So for me, there's, there's no use asking for a marriage certificate. Parang discriminatory yun. Okay, we take note of that po. Kasi Pero for... we don't, hindi na, kailangan natin malaman kung siya ba ay live-in, nag-live-in, o kung siya ba ay may asawa at uh, kasal, o boyfriend lang niyang kasama niya. Ba't pa natin pakialaman yung buhay niya? Maliban na lang kung ito ay aplikante papuntang abroad, na requirement talaga kasi dideklara mo na ikaw ay may asawa para yung mga beneficiary mo especially uh, ikaw, kung seaman ka maging yes. seafarer ka para yung remittance na ipapadala doon sa mga si tinatawag natin uh, dependents yun siguro nakikita kong sense na kailangan ng marriage certificate what do you think yes po um Mr. Chair we agree po with your um proposition ah, siya yung, siya, siya, ah. Chair. Yes, Mr. Senator. Okay. Um, we agree po with your idea po. Um, basically, tama po yun na for purposes of abroad, talagang kailangan natin ng marriage certificate to identify po kasi yung proper family to give support. So we take note po of your suggestion na siguro kailangan din namin determine whether it's for local or domestic. Recording stopped. The ano, uh, recording in progress. Legislated wage, syempre, ayaw ninyo, no? 
we we opposed that. Okay. The, the out, na naposan na namin yun out of the topic na yun. Tinatanong ko lang. Anyway, uh, okay, how would the concerned government agencies incorporate the discount on uh, online applications and determine that the applicant belongs to an indigent family? Who can answer this? Can you answer it? Um, yes, Kasi Mr. Chair. Kasi malalaman kung talagang he or she belongs to uh, sa lower income class. Yes, po. Um, for this one, Mr. Chair, allow me to relate this in our experience. Um, 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 with regard to the request for PSA, for birth and marriage certificates, um, right now... Um, First and foremost, we would like to acknowledge the members of the Interagency Monitoring Committee of the First Time Job Seekers, which include the NBI, the PSA, the DILG, and other concerned agencies. With regard to the PSA, kasi, one of the concerns that we received namin is through their online application. Wala pa po kasi talagang mechanism that, um, unlike NBI, na once you registered online, there's a portion na determine if you're a job seeker or for your, this case, indigent. However, in case of NBI kasi, meron na po silang portal na once you check online, merong item then na parang you're, it's asking, are you a first-time job seeker? When you click it, meron na po silang proper mechanisms na i-identify na hindi na nila kailangan magbayad. So they just printed out yung copy and then upon presentation dun sa concerned office, NBI office, bibigay na po sa kanila yung certificate. And then for PSA, yun po, kailangan po kasi walk-in. And then they submit the appropriate documents and then they will be provided the benefits of the law. So yun lang po yung nakikita naming challenges. So magkakaproblema tayo sa PSA. Unlike yung sinabi mo nga, NBI, kompleto sila ng mekanismo. Yes po. you have any representative from the PSA? Yes. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, on the part of the PSA, in our outlets, uh, we need to have an outlet, uh, an online appointment prior to uh, the, the client can be uh, catered in the outlet. But uh, the applicant, if it's uh, in urgent need of the document, we, we cater them walk-in, sir. And uh, these are free documents issued by the PSA. They can, they can get the record in one hour after the, the, after the application is done. Mr. Chair, Pudi Magtano. Senator Tulfo. Okay. Uh, you're from the PSA, Mr. Kirobin? Yes, Senator. Magkano po yung uh, uh, pagkuha ng birth certificate ang singit po sa PSA? Ang, ang birth, marriage, and death, sir, I, we, we collect 155 pesos, while the Senomar, Senodet is 210. Senomar, which, yung birth certificate, magkano 150? 155, sir. You're right. Uh, 155. Kailan pa po yan, yung 155? I'm sorry, sir. Kailan po nag-umpisa yung 155? Uh, I think it's 2,000 pa, sir. Okay, so hindi pa kayo tumataas. Okay, huwag kayong tumaas, ha? Huwag kayong sumabay sa pagtaas ng mga bilihin. Wala kayong karapatan na tumaas kasi siyempre, yung mga uh, pupunta sa inyo para humingi ng mga dokumento, karamihan sa kanila, required na required yun sa para sila magkaroon trabaho. So, huwag nyo nang tagain. Sir, for your, for your for information of the body, po, the first time job seeker, as we we issue uh, simple registered documents for free. Oh, that's good for first time. Yes, sir. Pero yung pinag-usapan natin namin kasi dito, eh, hindi yung mga first time to, yung mga uh, second time or third time na na nilipat sila ng ibang trabaho at hihingan sila ng mga dokumento. So, dito na papasok. So, dapat mura. Uh, meron bang taga ano rito? Uh, medical, uh, Mr. Chair? Kasi medical certificate daw is 1,000. DOH? Good morning, Paul. Yes, sir. DOH? Yeah, yeah, DOH. I've heard DOH. na sa ilang mga taong nakausap ko, pag sila'y kumuha ng medical certificate sa kalang doktor, isang libo? Yung sa, I think, Mr. Senator po, yung sa consultation fee po yan, sir. Yung 1,000 pesos na I think tabanggit po natin. And, uh, Yun, usually po yun, sir, sa mga uh, privado po. Sa, I think sa government po natin na uh, mga facilities, uh, uh, hindi po, sa outpatient facility, outpatient uh, uh, department po nila, hindi, ng government facilities ay alam ko pong hindi po naniningin. 
Hindi na ningil. So itong 1,000 ko minsan sa, sa bagay, may choice naman yung aplikante kung pupunta sa private o public. Kasi sa private, ang pagkakaalam ko, eh, kung halimbawa yung private ang pinakamalapit, nagmamadali, so pupunta sa private, eh, 1,000 daw. Pag sa public, o oh, nga, libre, mahaba ang pila at malayo, lalo kung may deadline sa pagsabit na application niya, napipilitin siya pupunta sa private. So dapat, itong mga private, pwede nyo siguro pagsabihan, eh, pag alam nila na job applicants, eh, para for the purpose of applying a job, baka pwedeng babaan yung presyo minus 20% pa para mas mapabilis yung apply ng mga pobre. We'll take note of your suggestion, Mr. Senator. Thank you, po. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chair. Senator Tulfo. Uh, Ms. Sheila, kapag ang isang aplikante ay nakakuha ng discount, no? uh, hindi na ba siya pwede mag-apply ulit kung sakasakaling mag-expire na o nawala ang kanyang clearance? Actually, um, Mr. Chair, that's really our concern with regard to this bill. If it's really a one-time benefit or as long as he or the person is considered indigent, maybe we could extend these benefits and privileges since ito naman po talaga yung um, intention talaga, the genuine intention of this bill is to really help them to raise their uh, standard of living. However, we also, maybe the good committee also consider that since we are promoting um, decent work of this indigent, syempre ang nakikita natin looking forward na talagang maging member and productive um, member sila ng society at ma-uplift talaga. So hindi na nila kailangang kumuha ng ganitong privilege that they could really sustain on their own po. So maybe during the TWG meeting, we could... Um, check into this possibility if we will grant a one time or subject to certain conditions na mag-aarise po. Basta ang ating goal is to really help them to have this discount para sa kanilang pre-employment documents. Alright. Uh, alimbawa, meron, syempre hindi rin natin maiwasan na meron mga aplikante na magiging abusado. Correct? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, what would be the measures to be implemented to ensure that there will be no abuses on the part of the applicants? So, as again, Mr. Chair, may I relate the answer to this question with our implementation of the first time, Job Seekers Assistance Act. We also receive several concerns na may mga nag apply kasi na hindi naman first time. That's why um, we issued the Joint Operational Guidelines highlighting a grievance mechanism for all the concerned government agencies. So dito po sa guidelines na to, binibigyan po natin ng authority yung mga concerned agency na mag-issue ng kanilang um, sariling guidelines on how to how to facilitate those um, issues and concerns on their level. And then meron din po tayong procedure for that. So maybe we could adopt that in this bill or incorporate para po ma-ensure lang natin na patas po ang pagpa, pagpapatupad ng batas na ito. Alright, have you submitted your position paper? We submitted po, but maybe we could, yes, Mr. Chair, baka we could resubmit the position paper and provide this ano po, additional inputs. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Maybe after Holy Week, sabay-sabay na kayo ng NEDA and the other government agencies. Yes, pa. Okay, thank you. Uh, Military representative from the Philippine National Police. Yes, sir. Yes. Magkano police clearance ninyo? Uh, for the National Police Clearance, sir, 150 pesos, sir. Since when? Tagal na? Uh, 2018 po kami, sir, nag-start. 2018, sir, nag-start. 2018? Yes, sir. Yung issue one, sir, ng National Police Clearance. All right. Uh, hindi pa kayo nagtataas? No, sir. NBI? Ano NBI? Yes, sir. Uh, How much? Ang NBI po namin, Mr. Chair, is uh, 130 po. Tapos may additional lang po pag nagbayad sila online, 30 pesos po. So Bakit 160. kinakailangan may, may dagdag? Uh, um, convenience fee po sa provider po namin, sir. Alright. So DOH, nasagot na, no? Yung medical certificate, nasagot nyo na yung tanong ni Senator Tulfo. Is it CHED? Yes, Mr. Chair. Sa CHED po, ang... Miscellaneous and other school fees po ay um, dinidetermine po ng kanya-kanya pong governing board. So wala po kaming uh, across the board po na uh, 
uh, fees on the transcript of records and diploma. Pero po, pag secure po nila yung uh, CAV sa CHED, yung pong certification, authentication, verification sa Commission on Higher Education na po, ay 80 pesos per copy na lang po yun, um, Honorable Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you po. Okay, so, uh, DLG. Morning po, Mr. Chair. Clearance. Ano? Ah, yung mga work clearance po, sir. Yes. Ah, uh, depende po sa ano Barangay. po. Barangay. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, depende. More or less average. Ah, uh, hindi naman po lumalagpas na mga 150 po 'yun, sir. Sigurado ka? Ah, uh, depende po sa ano, sir. Eh. Usually ah uh, nagbe-base po yung pagsa-schedule po nagbe-base po sa income pero yung mga work permit, work permit po mga at least uh, mga 150 to 200 lang po yun, sir. So, uh is it mandatory for our constituents to to pay a fee pagka kailangan ng barangay clearance? Is it mandatory? Yes, sir. Asa na po pwede para sa barangay mismo? Kita na ng barangay yan? Yes, sir. Alright, kasi nung naging mayor din ako, nung uh, pag kumukuha kasi ng barangay clearance sa isang barangay, nung araw, nung panahon ko, that was uh, uh, early 90s, wala naman, wala naman din naman nagbabayad yung makababayad ko ng barangay clearance. Kailan pa na-implement ito? Uh, sir, uh, right now, I, I don't have the, the data with me right hmm. now. But as far as I No, bro, sir. Uh, in, uh, in, 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 ano po, uh, hindi naman po re-require talaga. Pero depende po kasi sa... Uh, optional, optional. Sa barangay, sir. Optional yung pagbayad, gano'n? Yes. Depende oh. po sa barangay, sir, kung nag-require po sila, sir. Eh, hmm. Pero so far po, may mga barangays po na nag-require. Yung iba naman po, wala, sir. So, anong ginagawa ng DILG... Uh, pinapayagan niya na maningil yung yung barangay okay lang sa inyo tapos uh, so, yung mga ibang barangay hindi na niningil ng barangay clearance uh, sir as of right now po uh, wala po po kaming uh, memorandum regarding the matter po but uh, in case po na i uh, i-bring up naman po we are willing to uh, ano naman po issue a memorandum regarding the matter. Sir. Well, I suggest that uh, you come up with a memorandum or executive order um, uh, para sabihan itong ating mga barangay na huwag na maningil ng, huwag na singilin yung kanilang mga sila kinasasakupan ng barangay clearance. This is duly noted for your honor. Yeah. What, yung average ng, ano, hindi mo alam kung 100 o ano? Ah, uh, Uh, right now, sir, uh, as far as I I know po, mga ganun lang po, sir, 100, 150 to 200 po yung uh, more or less po, sir. Sana, uh, ano, uh, I'm serious I'm, uh, with my uh, suggestion na sana maglabas kayo ng executive orders. That is really not it for your honor. Para uh, uh, to instruct all barangay chairmen, chairpersons, not to, ano, na hindi naman ningil dun sa kanilang mga kinasasakupan. No? Yes, for your honor. All right. Thank you. you Tungkol sa NBI, sa PNP, magiging malaki ba yung inyong kawalan, yung revenue loss ng inyong ahensya kung bibigyan natin ng 20% uh, discount yung mga mahirap, may, mahirap na aplikante? PNP tsaka NBI. Uh, on the part ng PNP, sir, hindi naman, sir. But actually, sir, we are already giving 20% sa PWD and uh, 20% for senior citizens, sir. So, okay. hindi naman po, sir, siya kawala. Kung 50% ang gawin natin. Okay lang po, sir. Okay lang. Yes, sir. Adi, 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 gawin na natin 50%. Eh. Hindi pala, hindi pala maapektuhan kayo. NBI? Uh, ganun din naman po. Kaga, uh, kagtulad ng PNP, uh, hindi naman po maapektuhan. Depende pag, na lang po doon sa uh, pan namin sa TWG, sir. Doon sa implementation po. Pag 50%, hindi pa rin kayo maapektuhan. <laughs> Bakit? <laughs> Pwede ha? naman po, sir. Pwede. Feasible. Uh, ha? Uh, 
Mr. Chair, depende po kasi kung gaano karami po yung mga indigent po. Kung like 50% din po ng current na ini-issuehan din, that would be significant po na mababawas po. So, sa modalit salita, hindi ka papayag sa 50%? Medyo uh, malaki mo wala. Yes, sir. Pero depende po sa kung gaano kalaki, sir, yung karami po. Eh, marami, sigurado. Pero maraming may hirap uh, sa atin dito. We support, sir, pero we are using also it's a modernization ng NBI po yung retention part of the clearance fee, sir. Alright. Can you, sub do you have, a have you submitted your position paper? Not yet. We will submit, sir, uh, after Holy Week din po. Okay, thank you. Together with the Philippine National Police? Yes, Mr. Chair. We will submit, sir. All right. Uh, representative from DM DMW, no? Attorney Asak Pamp Pampolina. Yes, sir. Okay, how does the DMW plan to inform the our overseas Filipino workers and their families about the benefits of this act and and availing of its benefits. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, for new applicants, uh, probably, uh, technically, the DMW does not collect any uh, processing fees from them. Uh, we collect it from the manning agencies or the recruitment mm -hmm. agencies. So no, uh, kahit po 100%, wala po kaming uh, uh, kukuning ano, sa kanila. Uh, uh, no, yes, sir. <laughs> Um, uh, the 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 key there is, for example, if they need uh, for new applicants, they would need um, uh, birth certificates because we do not deploy uh, minors. So, uh, your birth certificate that would be helpful, sir, if uh, they can they can obtain their birth certificates at a uh, discounted price. Uh, also, they if um, uh, I think uh, passports, if uh, we can also. Uh, Palayata from ano, DFA, but uh, passports, if they can uh, uh, reduce their fees for indigents and uh, new applicants, then that would also be helpful. Um, we, uh, 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 we, we just want to clarify in, in, the, in the proposed bills that uh, the increase in the rate should not uh, be passed on to the, um, uh, should not be, uh, the base rate should not be increased because if, for example, we uh, we uh, the proposed twenty percent uh, 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 discount is given to new applicants, but the uh, base rate is increased, then uh, it it might not give the uh, uh, intended benefit. So we would uh, probably in the law uh, in the proposed bill we can or the TAWG we can uh, just. Uh, 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 clarify that the base amount is still the same. So the twenty percent discount will be based on the base amount. So um, and Sigurat, uh, so final words, sir. We we of, of course support the and load the uh, proposed uh, uh, twenty percent discount on on uh, uh, certain uh, requirements for uh, new applicants, uh, especially those who are indigent. And uh, I think the NB uh, also the NBI clearances, the PNP clearances is very helpful. So thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Asik uh, Papulina. Any representative from the Department of Foreign Affairs? Hola. None? All right. It's PSA. Saan ba napupunta yung fees na kinokolekta ninyo? The fees that we are collecting, uh, Your Honor, is diretso po sa Kabandang Bayan. Diretso? Yes. Sa National Treasury? Yes. Okay, what operations or activities of your agency will be affected kung magbibigay tayo ng 20% o di kaya 50%? Uh, Your Honor, uh, our system right now ay nasa level pa po ng, with our partnership with uh, private entity and the sharing is, uh, I think it's 45-55. So for the 20%, ay, uh, hindi pa siguro namin... <laughs> Kasi po, we, we, ha, we have the, the one time, uh, yung first time job seeker na free na po siya. Mm -hmm. So, baka i-ano na po kami nung aming partners dun sa development mm -hmm. system. Kasi uh, our system is on ongoing pa po siya ng uh, PPP. Okay. Can the PSA provide the latest data on the number of indigent families that might benefit from this act? Meron na kayo yung datos na? Uh, 
meron meron kaming data sir sa latest top 10 on 2020 maybe we can provide the uh, statistics on that 2020 yes, what about the succeeding years uh the latest pop senior under is uh 2020 pa lang po yung result so, you have the data right now uh i'm sorry your under but the data that i have is the the beneficiaries of the first time job seekers so uh the data that will be uh needed will be forwarded to you soon sir if, if it's necessary all right Ched, All right. what role will uh, Ched play in providing educational document support for indigent job seekers? Uh, Your Honor, sa nakita ko po, um, lalong-lalo na nanabanggit po sa um, proposed legislative measures ay yung transcript of records and diploma po from the state universities and colleges. Maaari naming uh, maitag or mag makagawa ng polisiya upang yung mga aming mga state universities and colleges ay i, um, include or incorporate nila sa kanilang student services ang um, pag um, uh, consider or paglagay ng um, discounts sa mga ating mga indigent students and learners sa kanilang pagkuha ng diploma and transcript of records your honor thank you uh, miss 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 Castro, all right. Napsi, good morning. May Mr. we get Chair. your position with regard to this bill? Uh, we have yet to submit our official position after Holy Week, but uh, we would like to uh, put forward about the identification of beneficiaries. Um. It stated that we will be using the CBMS and I believe it has yet to be fully operationalized. So while we're waiting for the CBMS, uh, we can use the National Housing Targeting System for Poverty Reduction or the DSWD listahan and as our source of information. Pursuant to Republic Act 11291 or the Magna Carta of the Poor. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Please submit your position paper after Holy Week. All right. What about the... Yung Liga ng Barangay, wala. Did we invite them? Even the representatives from the LMP, League of Municipalities, wala pa rin. Regrets? Snabero, ah. All right. Uh, we will conclude the, or we will terminate the uh, a discussion on the Kabalikan sa Hanapway Act and uh, I urge the government agency, agencies concerned to please uh, submit your position paper uh, before the committee even after Holy Week. Kahit uh, middle ng April, okay lang. Kasi we will have a uh, one-month break dito sa Senate. Actually, we're, we're on our last two days before we go into recess. So before April 29, okay? Huh? Oh, yes. Mr. E.R. from? From the Federation of Free Workers, Mr. Chair. Yes. Opo. Um, baka po, Chair, pwede rin pong makonsider doon sa mga kakuha ng discounts, especially yung pong mga contractual. Uh, kasi kung sila mo Recording stopped.
Okay. Uh, Recording in progress. Ngayon ay tumungo naman tayo sa ikalawang cluster ng mga paano kalang batas na nasa agenda para sa araw nito. Isa sa mga pinakamaligang trabaho sa ating bansa ang pagiging construction work katulad ng karpintero, tubero, mason, pintor, electrician, welder at iba pa. Mula sa pinakasimpleng bahay hanggang sa mga skyscrapers, sila ang gumagawa ng istruktura na ligtas natin pinakikinabaw. Sila ay nagtatabaw sa lahat ng panahon, umulan man ang umaraw. At kinakaharap, kinakaharap ang posibilidad ng peligro maaaring mangyaring anumang oras. The paper entitled Risk Assessment on Filipino Construction Workers by James Rainier Domingo and others published in 2015 quoted a study conducted by the DOLE which states that Despite having standards to ensure worker safety, a high number of cases of injuries are still reported annually. Furthermore, it, it is uncertain if these proper work methods and standards are followed by construction workers employed outside the supervision of the Department of Labor and Employment. These informally employed workers have grown exponentially in the recent years. Consequently, the injuries acquired by these workers remain unreported. Upang lalayan ng mga construction workers sa panahon ng pagkakasakit o aksidente at ang kanilang pamilyas pagkamatay ng, ng nasabing manggagawa, May mga employers o contractors sa kusalkuyan na nagbibigay ng insurance sa kanilang mga gagawa. Subalit, iba-iba po ang coverage ng nasabi ng banda. Karamihan sa kanila na, na nasa maliit na mga proyekto ay walang insurance. Ito ang kusalkuyan kalagay ng ating mga construction workers na nice tugunan ng mga panukalang batas na tatalakayin natin yan. The measures filed by Senators Gatchalian and Tulfo intend to make it mandatory for employers to provide accident and life insurance for construction workers and to make them liable for workplace accidents. Let us hear the position of their stakeholders in, this, in the industry. Any uh, your position, Attorney Baron? Good morning, Good morning, Mr. Chair. Um, the Employees' Compensation Commission supports the bill. However, we shall submit our likewise our position paper on this matter uh, in the same period that was given to the... On or before uh, April 29. On or before April 29, Mr. Chair. All right. Uh, um, have you read this, uh, this particular bill? Yes, Mr. Chair. So in your own opinion, do you support this bill? Uh, we support the bill, Mr. Chair. However, uh, we do have some reservation on uh, on Section Six of sec uh, on Section Six of uh, Senate Bill Number Two Three Six Nine uh, regarding the contractor liability for workplace accidents. Um, however, uh, upon reading the bill, there is no conflict. Uh, Mr. Chair, with the existing uh, presidential decree number 626, which enacted the Employees' Compensation Law, Mr. Chair. However, um, jurisprudence, uh, Mr. Chair, has uh, has veered away from uh, the with the enactment of the Workmen's Compensation Law and as well as the enactment of PD 626 has moved away from the presumption of liability for uh for uh for employers uh we may need to uh reconcile uh this provision uh with some existing uh with some existing uh legislation uh on this matter mr Chair. that's why um the employees compensation commission is seeking uh some time to file to submit our position paper on this mr chair all right attorney baron Any other resource persons uh, with regard to this uh, particular bill who wishes to uh, give their own inputs? Um, Senator Tulfo? Uh, Attorney Patrice, you said uh, meron kayong reservation dun sa Section 6 of Contract Reliability kasi meron workers' comp, right? Uh, gaano ba ka bilis my process yung uh, work is <laughs> sa isang construction worker na na-injure sa trabaho um the uh, for, the our implementing agency specifically Mr. Chair for private for private uh for private workers the implementing agency Mr. Chair is the social security system Uh, like I have mentioned, Paul, we 
uh, we we support this bill because uh, there are instances, Mr. Chair, wherein if the worker is not registered with the SSS and if the worker uh, the the employer fails to register their uh, their worker, uh, they cannot uh, they cannot benefit from the state insurance fund. That's why uh, ECC supports this uh, uh, supports the the bill because this will definitely benefit uh, those workers who are not registered under uh, the SSS. Uh, who, are, who their employers fail to register them with with the SSS, Mr. Chair. Attorney Patrice, pasensya na, medyo magagalit ako sa inyo. Ngayon lang to. Nandito ba yung SSS, Mr. Chair? Kasi maraming sa mga manggagawa natin, whether construction worker, SG, security guard, factory worker, but anyway, pinag-usapan naman ating construction worker na hindi registered sa SSS. Wala silang binipisyo, pilal pag-ibig, nothing, and underpaid pa. Trabaho dapat yun ang dole na para ma-monitor na itong mga manggagawa natin, itong mga construction worker natin ay properly compensated at naibibigay yung karapat-dapat na binipisyo na nakasaad sa ating batas. Mukhang nagkulang kayo sa, ganun, sa departamentong yon kasamang SSS, pil pag-ibig. Because uh, day in and day out, even while we speak, may mga nakapila ngayon sa action center ko na ganun ang reklamo, construction worker, wala silang benefits. Hindi ba namomonitor ito ng uh, dole? Um, as far as I, 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 I know, po, uh, Mr. Senator, the payment of SSS premium is part of the labor inspection uh, checklist of the Department of Labor and Employment, Mr. Chair. So, uh, the th those uh, th those uh, firms that are uh, subject to inspection, Mr. Chair. Kaya nga, subject to inspection. Pero bakit napakaraming construction company hanggang ngayon para makabuti, tuloy-tuloy pa rin sa pagbabiolate ng labor code natin at hindi nagbibigay ng tamang pasweldo at hindi nagbibigay ng benepisyo at kasama dyan insurance at pinag-usapan natin insurance at kapag ito mga pobre yung manggagawa natin na disgrasya, nahulog sa building, na balian since wala silang, hindi sila registered sa SSS, ang nangyari, nagmamakawa sa kanila, sila sa kanilang amo at itong si amo, pagtataguan sila. At kung bibigyan man sila, babaratin pa. So, these are the things na dapat monitor ninyo. Although ngayon, meron tayong, uh, da dapat lahat ng mga construction workers may insurance, pero hindi ito required. So, ngayon kasi ginagawa mandatory. Ang, ang nakikita kasi yung problema din, uh, Dole, yung monitoring, kulang kayo doon. So, paano niyo po ma mabibigyan solusyon itong pagkukulang yung ito na kung saan hindi nyo namumonitor ng lubusan itong construction industry na kung saan ah, talagang naabuso ng mga kontraktor. Marami dyan mga construction companies ng mga fly-by-night. Hindi nyo namumonitor yan. Alam mo ba yun, yung contractor is a subcon and then another subcon hanggang sa yung pangatlo wala siyang kapital, laway lamang at siya nang bahala sa tao. E, Siyempre, itong tatlong beses na dumaan na subcontractor, third subcontractor, e, walang pera ito. Kaya kapag nasugatan, na disgrasya, walang pa ba ito SSS to, yung pobre manggagawa, sorry na lang. Diba? So, these are the things that should, the dollar should be monitoring. Dapat on a regular basis, pag merong construction site, pinupuntahan nyo dapat, tinitingnan nyo po yung listahan, dapat nagkakaroon ng headcount. Tukunin nyo sa foreman yung listahan ng mga construction worker, isa-isa. Hinahanapan nyo yung payslip. Hindi yung ginagawa to, I'm sure. Tama o tama ako? If I may po, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning from the Department of Labor and Employment. Um, here are working conditions po. Uh, it is true po na part of our monitoring po na chinecheck po lahat ng requirements needed for the uh, 
work workplaces po. In terms of the construction industry po, uh, we do require them to submit a construction safety and health program wherein naka-itemize naka po doon or nakalagay po doon yung mga safety and health measures that needed to be uh, followed po. And uh, part of our activities din po right now, uh, construction sector po is a priority sector po for inspection of our uh, inspection activities po for this year. And uh, kasama po iyon sa tinitignan din po yung kanila pong uh, uh, coverage to uh, social benefits po like SSS, Peel Health, and Pag-ibig. And whenever there are findings po on that uh, social uh, contributions po, we do refer them to SSS, Peel Health, and Pag-ibig po. Okay, ang sinasabi ko rin kasi, Ma'am Jennifer, okay, sa umpisa, check kayo, good yun. Pero dapat yun sa palagitnaan kasi sa umpisa mag presente ng mga kuwanong dokumento, yung gawa-gawa pa, fake pa, kadalasan. Dapat yung bang after a month or so sa ongoing na construction, doon kay papasok. Doon yung makikita yung kabalasto ganito mga construction firm. Alam nyo ba na marami sa mga construction workers natin, ang payslip nila, palara ng sigarilyo? Totoo yan. Nakalagay lang sa grade 1 uh, paper pad. Wala sa ayos. Ang daming, sabi nyo, priority yung, ano, yung construction workers natin. Ang daming aping-aping na mga construction worker. Security guard sa construction worker ang mga pinaka-aping manggagawa sa Pilipinas. Take note of that, please. Yes, Mr. Chair. We'll take But, note of that po and uh, to be part of our monitoring activities. Siguro, po. continue monitoring. And then, dito yes. ma insurance commission, uh, you make sure po na pag nasa batas na ito, yung mga insurance companies na fly by night, walisin nyo na. Kasi napakaraming, Mr. Chair, na mga insurance companies na fly by night. Kung hindi man fly by night, ang bagal magbayad. Diba? If I may, uh, Senator Pulfo, have you identified those fly by night insurance companies? Do you have any data or records? Um, we are currently investigating a few print uh, companies who are selling printed like products, sir. But we are yet to identify the other fly-by-night companies. In my dagdag, kung atake, Mr. Chair, uh, Attorney Camille, uh, yung pagbabayad, kasi ang nangyari, magpa-file halimbawa ng claims, uh, yung company on behalf of the uh, worker, eh, matagal magbayad. Abuti ng magaling na yung worker, hindi pa nakapagbayad yung uh, insurance company. So, ang nangyari, eh, now it's either maungutang employer, kung mabait siya, mag na employer, eh, kung walang pang na employer, yung manggagawa na pobre ang magremedyo and then babayaran na lang later on ng employer. So, dapat on time magbayad uh, yung insurance companies. Dapat merong set period na After from the date of the filing of the claim, this should be paid after, say, 30 days or no more than 90 days or something uh, like that. This is duly noted, Mr. Senator, and we will continue to monitor the claims payments of the insurance companies. Okay, sige. Kasi, mismo ako rin, no? pero, pero medyo malayo na to sa topic. Segway ko lang. Uh, Nag-file ako ng claim sa, 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 sa kotse ko. Uh, ang daming pasikot-sikot kasi mga insurance companies mostly they will find a way o butas na para madinay nila yung claim hindi naman talaga trabaho ng insurance companies di sa Pilipinas eh. kadalasa hindi naman lahat pero karamihan akalain mo Mr. Chair pati ako gusto akong lokohin ayaw kong bayaran ang daming mga binigay na rason hanggang sa sabi ko kasi hindi kayo magbabayad di maghihiring tayo ayun saka nagbayad kasi mabubuking na sila so yung sa akin lamang Uh, make sure na ito mga insurance companies, pag nakita na legit yung bill, huwag na huwag pasikot-sikot, bayaran na agad pag legit yung claims. Diba? We will monitor your Mr. <laughs> Mr. Senator. Thank you. So, mabalik tayo sa Dole. So, Dole, uh, please, 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 sobrang please, pakimonitor itong uh, sa mga construction companies. Ang daming mga fly-by-night ng mga contractor. Alam niyo sinasabi ko, contractor A, is subcontact niya yung kay B, si B subcontact niya yung kay C. Nag-gets nyo? Si C, laway na lang. Wala siyang kapital, wala siyang anything. So, madali siyang tumakas. 
kapag nagkaaberya, tataka siya. Ngayon, sasabihin nitong uh, forma nitong sa kay C, pumunta ka kay B. Pagpunta kay B, sabi ni B, wala akong kinalama dyan, punta ka kay A, nagpapasapasahan. So, dapat meron talaga tayong constant monitoring sa lahat ng construction companies. Matatandaan ko way back doon sa Makati, I think this happened many years ago, Mr. Chair, may nahulog na construction worker, uh, bumigay ata yung uh, something doon sa building at uh, ilan ang namatay. Eh, dumating agad yung dole. Yung pumorma-porma agad yung dole at uh, nagsalita yung dole, nagpasikat in all. Pero wag ka, dapat sa umpisa pa lang, ano mo, neto niya na agad yun na may problema na pala doon sa construction site na yun. Diba? So dapat mapipreempt nyo bago dumating yung sakuna. Diba? Make sure na nakasumar. Pasensya na kayo ha, I don't have anything, nothing against you. Magkakaibigan pa rin tayo sa dole. I'm just saying my position. Mukhang galit na ata si Tori Patrice. Hindi, baka nagugutom lang. Ay, sige, kain ka muna, ma'am. Anyway, okay. I-end ko na ito. Please, monitor nyo lang. Kasi kawawa naman itong mga construction workers natin. Diba? Sila yung palaging detehado. Totoo yun. Yung, sa palaran ng sigarilyo. Diba dapat yung, yung payslip? Dapat nasa tama yan. Lahat dapat naman gagawa may payslip. Hanggang ngayon, Mr. Chair, pumupunta sa action center ko, pinapakita payslip palaran ng sigarilyo. Saan ka nakita nung kalokohan yun? Diba? Dito may kita na bas, binabastos yung mga construction workers natin. Walang respeto ito mga uh, employer sa uh, ating mga construction workers. Okay. Salamat ng marami, Mr. Chair. Salamat, Ma'am Jennifer. Salamat, Ma'am Patrice. Attorney Patrice, thank you po. Thank you, Senator Tulfo. Uh, DPWH, Charlene, mm. anong uh, favor yung sumusuporta rito sa Pano Kalang Batas? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Senator. The DPWH being the state's engineering and construction arm welcomes and expresses its support on the subject legislative measure, um, which aims to address the pressing concerns surrounding the welfare and safety of construction workers by introducing remarkable changes which will significantly um, improve their insurance coverage. The department recognizes the indispensable role of the construction industry in shaping the economic, social, and environmental landscape of a nation. Such industry generates employment opportunities across various skill sets and provide livelihoods for millions to reduce unemployment rates and alleviate poverty. For the chair, chairman's information and Mr. Senator's information, DPWH issued Department Order Number 172, Series of 1992, which required contractors to obtain a contractor's all-risk insurance coterminous with the project completion. CARI serves as a protection against loss or damage caused by accidents, negligence, and natural disasters to the project, construction materials, and construction equipment. Moreover, under Department Order 197 Series of 2016, which was subsequently issued, it prescribed the policies, rules, and procedures relative to the preparation of the approved budget of the contract under the said DO, the premium for the carry is incorporated as an indirect cost in the preparation of the ABC. Mr. Chair, Senator Tulfo, you're done. All right, Senator Tulfo. Uh, sabi niyo po, uh, noong 1992, nag-issue ng Department Order ang DPWH na require ang mga contractor na bumili ng insurance, all risk insurance. Contract liability. Nasusunod po ba ito? Yes, yes, sir. Um, okay, hindi nga. It is... Sa totoo, uh, lang, sa totoo lang. Mr. Senator, um, our rules and regulations provide that it a copy of the insurance... I, I, I'm not questioning that there's such a thing as all risk insurance, Department of 1992. Pero sa akin lang, nasusunod ba ito? Um, I, at, at the moment, Your Honor, I have no information whether there is a violation. However, our department orders require that a copy of yes. the insurance and the yes. payment of the insurance. So what company, happens if they don't, they, they, they violate this uh, department order? Sige, diretsuhin ko na. Ang dami ko na experience po, Yusek, na kung saan 
eto mga contractor sa isang construction site sa kalsada na didisgrasya po yung mga worker o na didisgrasya yung pedestrian walang insurance eto mga contractor wala talaga ang ginagawa ng mga nadidisgrasya nagre-remedyo sila pupunta sila sa barangay para magsumbo patatawag ng barangay yung, yung construction company hindi sisipot pupunta sa dole hindi sisipot ang gusto nitong mga construction companies magdidimanda sa korte saan kukuha ng pandimanda itong pobre construction worker hindi po nasusunod wala um, marami akong karanasan dito na yung mga construction worker yung iba na mamatay pa na babalian kung meron mang pahirapan pag kami na mag mag intervene sa kapalang nagbabayad nagtatawaran pa kami para akala mo gulay sa paleke di ba magtatawaran kami sa presyo na dapat maibigay doon sa danyos doon sa na discussion so make sure am maganda sana ito all risk insurance implementation ng kulang siguro ang gagawin ninyo kapag uh, hindi sumunod na contractor blacklist perpetual blacklist meron na ba kayo na ba blacklist ng mga contractors yes uh, by violating the uh, uh, order by the DPWH yung mandatory insurance um regrettably your honor the blacklisting rules um focus on the project implementation itself um, with respect to project completion, uh, whether there is negative slippage. Um, the only measure that can ensure that our contractors provide this all-risk insurance is when we require them to submit proof of payment of premiums when they bill us um, before payment. So, the the proposed legislative measures actually are a uh, welcome development to the department your honors um, once approved we will incorporate uh, in our uh, contract agreement for our contractors to ensure compliance um, for occupational safety and health standards your okay hindi sila nag comply di wag niyo bayaran di ba simple as that because they already violated the you know the order coming from the DPWH. There is there was already a violation if they did not comply. Am I correct? Siguro, let's uh let's be harsh on this. Let's be tough on this. According to Senator Tulfo, maraming green reclamos sa kanyang programa. Kawawa rin yun itong ating mga construction workers na hindi nabibigyan ng, uh, ng mga insurance. Kasi in trabaho nila is very hazardous. Ano? Eh, kailangan talaga ng, ano, na mabalihan ka ng uh, buto dyan, mahulog ka dyan sa bubong. Hindi na makakapagtrabaho yan. Paano yung, paano makakain yung pamilya nila pag wala silang mga beneficyo ganun? Sa kalsada, halimbawa, Mr. Chair, nahulog sa bangin o naipit ng mga heavy equipment, mga magagawa. Ngayon, ang masaklap, wala sa listahan sila sa SSS, wala pang insurance. Ang nangyayari, ito pong uh, worker, magmamakaawa po yan, kulang na lang luluhod sa construction company. Kung sino may ari noon, nasa construction company, kumaawa siya, bigyan niya, bariya. Kung in, ngayon, kung uh, naawa siya, mag-aabono siya kung magkano mong kailangan danyos pambayad, pati sa ospital. Pero in a lot of cases na na-encounter ko, hindi eh. Meron kung hindi pa magsumbong sa akin hindi siya makakuha ng ustisya kung ano yung narapat para sa construction worker meron din mga walang hiyang contractor na hindi rin wala silang pakailang yes ano nangyari sa mga, sa mga magagawa ay mga salbahe talaga na kahit na hospital na na balian na malapit na mamatay hindi pa rin nila binibigyan ng pansin hindi na pinagtutuunan ng pansin so siguro ma'am sabi nyo magpapakita sila ng mga insurance policy, etc. Eh, paano kung pinagawa lang sa recto yun? Eh, magaling magawa ang recto. Kulang na lang nga, tao, kaya nga i-produce ng recto. Eh. Ipeke. So, how would you know? Um, 
Your honors, our um technical working groups uh in charge are in charge of verification of documents uh, submitted by our contractors. So um it goes through the process of uh, validation and evaluation, your honors, before a contract is approved. Bakit ang dami nagreklamo pa rin sa akin? But di maubos ubos <laughs> So implementation po talaga siguro. And I believe you, na maganda itong department order, ano? Pero implementation is very important. Anong use ng napakagandang department order o napakagandang batas kung wala naman nag-implement, kung not properly implemented, useless, walang ipin, bungal ang batas na yon o department order na yon. Uh, am I right, ma'am? Yes, Your Honor. Um, we, uh, I will take note, Your Honor, of uh, the observations of the Honorable Senator. Um, and if Your Honor, if you have specific um, information regarding... Regarding yes. these complaints, Your Honors, maybe the department can help facilitate yes. through our operations group, Your Honor. Sige, I uh, will get your number. Tama sinabi ni uh, Mr. Chair, Senator Jingoy, um, kailangan ma-blacklist pang-usap. Kung pwede, perpetual blacklist na, eh, na hindi ka na pwede, cancelin mo na yung license niya forever. Kasi alimbawa, lalo na kung yung isang construction worker na matay, tapos wala pala siyang kakayahan na bayaran yung hindi niya binayaran yung SSS tapos wala hindi niya inenroll sa insurance company I mean say, sa, sa yeah hindi niya inenroll sa insurance company tumakbo siya wala siyang pambayad ng fine eh dapat makulong siya bukod sa perpetual blacklist makulong but anyway kailangan niya sa perpetual blacklist na forever hindi na siya pwede mag, mabigyan ng disensya is that what do you think of that Ano reaction niyo doon, ma'am? Um, your Honors, uh, upon um, establishment of the violations committed, um, we will look into the terms and conditions of the contract um, and um, we will coordinate with the appropriate agencies in charge for the enforcement of the laws violated, Your Honors. For the information of Senator Tulfo, Yusek uh, Charlene, or Attorney Charlene as we fondly call her, uh, was an employee or staff of my of uh, Manila City Hall when my father was still mayor. Kaya kita mo magaling sumagot. Oh, nga magaling nga. Uh, you're a lawyer, Yusek. Yes. Uh, Attorney Sherlyn, Sher thank you for answering my questions. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ekop. Thank you, Attorney Sherlyn. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, with your indulgence, we requested... Uh, Comsec to invite PCA, Philippine Constructors uh, Association, Inc. Yeah. PC, Philipp Philipp right. Philippine Constructors right. Association, Inc. Thank you. What are your thoughts on this bill? Uh, uh, good morning, Paul. Uh, Honorable do... Chair. Yes, Paul. Um, well, um, PCA supports uh, the bills as um, we believe that this will help implement better safety mechanisms that will ensure the safety and security of workers. These workers, Your Honor, are also our stakeholders. So, uh, malaki po yung halaga para sa amin po. No? But, um, but uh, please note po na uh, us at the PCA, um, our contractors in PCA are licensed and um, PCAB accredited. So, um, thus, they have um, undergone services um Trainings, compliance, yung mga AMO tra um, seminars prior to accreditation. So um, they have actually complied with all the standard insurance um, policies that are required, especially the ones that were um, mentioned earlier, yung sa carry po at saka yung sa dole na uh, requirements. Um, yun po, nakakomply po kami. We just have some reservation, Your Honor, on the higher... Uh, insurance no uh the other bill of um senator tulfo um we have some recommend um reservations as we have not reviewed entirely the bill um so we might revert back to you po on our position no okay on or before april 29th. april 29th po. all right but on your own opinion are you going to support this particular bill um yes po we support the yes. the bill Ang siguro po ang nakikita ko lang din is uh, actually ang tatama si Senator Tulfo po eh um yung mga na-approve po ng mga contractors 
sila po nagsasubmit ng mga requirements eh. Compliant sila eh. mm-hmm. The problem would be if pinasa nila kay Subcon B, pinasa pa kay Subcon C. So doon po nagkakaroon yata ng problema. Kasi mm-hmm. si Subcon C, yan yung wala sa radar ng government, ng DPWH, Alright. ng ating mga developers. So yun po yung medyo may issue. But kami, like PCA, nandun kami kay Subcon A kasi sila yung accredited, sila yung members namin. Eh. Pag pinasa yan ngayon uh, sa, ibang, sa mga subcontractors, doon na po nagkakaproblema siguro. So I think in terms of implementation, to be fair with, with the, the agencies here, um, may ikpit po sila <laughs> sa mga requirements. And our, our contractors actually, um, hindi yan... 400 pesos per worker, hindi nila sisirain yung pangalan nila na hindi sila magko-comply or papagawa sila sa rekto ng mga papeles nila. So medyo malalaki po yung mga million-million po yung mga um, kontrata po nakukuha. I think yun lang po kapag, ano, kasi marami pong segments yung sa subcontracting. Hindi lang po yung buong pagbagawa ng building vertical or horizontal but also yung calling yan yung mga yan sinasabcon po yan eh so yan don't boost to your honor siguro na nagkaka problema um hindi ko alam kung paano po natin siya ano but we support the bill because also we this is also a way to hunt down yung mga ating mga fly by night no kami po were against um those fly by night kasi yun yung nakakasira eh kumbaga yung aming mga members um, they are really uh, vying for accreditation and then suddenly there are subcontractors who are who can who can who manage to do business without any license no all right do sa a group mo is Philippine Contractors Association constructors Apo. Association, wala kayo fly by night contractors. Wala po kasi requirement po sa members, membership namin accredited po ng PICAB. Nang ak PICAB po. PICAB. Apo. Uh, what is PICAB? Is Miss Penny. I will. <laughs> yeah, please. Ah, uh, your honor, let me answer that, sir. Okay. Um I'm uh Felio Sigan, the OIC executive director of uh, CMDF. And to answer your question po, PICAB is the licensing uh, implementing board under Construction Industry Authority of the Philippines. Created po kami ng PD-1746. Yes, sir. Government agents. Um, CIAP po, implementing board po siya ng CIAP. Attached po kami sa Department of Trade and Industry. So, as part of of a uh, task po ng CIAP to promote, accelerate, and regulate the construction industry. Napaka-unique po ng construction industry kasi may siya po. So yung mga nabanggit po na problema about uh, uh, manpower development, licensing, overseas promotion, dispute resolution, yan po ang trabaho ng siya. And you are the head? No, sir. I'm the oh, OIC of one of the implementing boards of CIA, the CMDF in charge for manpower development. Well, is it, that's the first time I heard of uh, CIA. Yes, thank CIA. you for, yes, thank you for giving us the chance to promote our services mm-hmm. also. Uh, have you submitted your position paper? Not yet, sir, but I have uh, with me the position of all the implementing boards of CIAP. So I'll be speaking on behalf of CIAP with five implementing boards. Po. All right. You want to read it now? Yes, sir. Oh, sige. Can I say my piece, po, sir? I don't know. With your indulgence, yes. can I? How many minutes? 30 minutes? <laughs> no, sir. Just, I think, five minutes. All right. Two minutes. Bilisan ko na lang po. Uh, so, um, mandated by the uh, by PD seventeen forty six, we believe. Po, when was this established? Excuse me. You see, yeah. When was this established? Uh, sir, uh, we were established nineteen eighties. Pa po yung implement as well as implementing boards. So you have been an attached agency in the eighties, pa? Yes, sir. During the time of the then president Ferdinand E. Marcos. Okay. Sir, the the PCA actually. Uh, was the one who submitted this position paper to the then uh, the, the then president, citing that there should be a regulatory uh, uh, agency in charge. So the CIAP was then created for. So, so on behalf of the construction industry of the Philippines, we would like to manifest our support 
to these proposed measures seeking to mandate the provision of insurance for construction workers. We believe that uh, part of the welfare of the workers is the um, this um, integral coverage. The CEAP and its implementing boards support this bill as these are in line with one of the action plan, uh, plans under the Philippine Construction Industry Roadmap. Uh, that is 10-year roadmap. Ang construction industry po, we have a uh, roadmap prepared for workers, professional, and construction industry. Agenda item number 12 of the Professional Skills and Productivity Action Plan, championed by the CFCMDF, aims to institutionalize sa uh, safety nets for the benefit of construction workers and professionals through collaboration with the labor sector, the insurance industry, and other relevant agencies in creating new facilities and products. CIAP will be submitting our official position paper through DTI a letter, at a later date as we are still finaliz finalizing our submission, sir. However, we would like to raise some recommendations in reference to these measures. We recommend, number one, consulting with labor sector for the promotion of the welfare of workers and the development of relevant uh, safety net programs for our workers. We also need to collaborate with the insurance industry in uh, designing products uh, fit for the peculiarities of the construction industry and development project. We also would like to submit to the relevant agencies for the computation or determination or the minimum rate of the benefits for workers and revise the COA ceiling of the total project cost for safety expenses to take into account the inherent risk involved in the project. More, uh, uh, moreover, we would like to uh, finalize the insurance coverage to be mandated. It is also advisable to review the scope of the Department of Labor and Employment's Compensation Program, or the ECP. This will alleviate the financial burden on employers who are already covering EC contribution, a portion of the monthly SSS contribution remitted by employers for their employees. The ECP offers a comprehensive set of benefits to both public and private sector employees, as well as their dependents. In cases of, of work-related contingencies such as illness, injury, disability, or death. And that's all from CF, sir. Uh, we will be submitting for our uh, opposition paper once this finalized. Thank you, Paul. All right. Thank you, uh, Executive Director Ophelia Musigan. All right. Any other uh, uh, resource persons who wish to give uh, their own inputs with regard to this bill? Yes, uh, Arlene. Ms. Arlene. Good morning, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I'm from the Philippine Insurance Rating Association. And um, initially, uh, we've seen that the coverages stated in the proposed bill, these are existing and uh, available in the market. And we uh, making it a mandatory coverage would help the insurance industry to achieve economy of scale and therefore will positively result, hopefully to positively result into a more flexible um, terms or pricing for the for this market segment. But I think, I believe uh, the PIRA or the Insurance Rating uh, insurers and Reinsurers Association will have to submit a formal position paper also to detail all the uh, specific um, items or inputs that we want to uh, uh, provide uh, after hearing also the comments of the other um, stakeholders here, like for example the um, the specific insurance coverage design to to protect the interest not only of the project owners, the third party, and the workers, because um, uh, as I've also heard, um, the carry carry uh, in respect of the carries the contractor's all risks. It has different sections, the material damage or the coverage or the protect, protection of the project cost or the project itself. And we know that the principals or the project owners 
already monitor the you know the protection for those and uh, once you procure a uh, contractor's all risk insurance it comes with a uh, liability insurance which covers the the liability but uh, depending on the how how the insurance coverage is as uh, um designed it may not automatically provide cover for the workers so it it needs a um, special endorsement clause which comes with a certain Oh, also, in terms of pricing or in other special conditions that need to be reflected. So, um, but uh, in respect of the initial coverage just cited uh, in the proposed bill, like for example, the group personal accident insurance, we don't see any problem with that. But if at all, we would like to provide some comments and clarifications, like for example, the table of indemnities uh, that were initially mentioned there, uh, there are other uh, type of injuries to the body parts or to the members that that are not specifically mentioned, but in the available industry insurance form, there are more detailed uh, description of the table of indemnities. Like, for example, we didn't see there the loss of hearing or loss of finger. So what if types of injuries are the ones uh, resulted in it or contracted by the workers. So we, we, we would like to itemize or detail that in the formal position paper. And also a clarification on the contractor's liability because um, as also, as I've also heard, um, uh, the, the, the objective of that is to cover um, Cover not only accident related, but also all other hazards, occupational hazard like sickness, this is contracted while in the course of the employments. And that is not being provided by the group personal accident, but is being provided by uh, a separate uh, available insurance protection, which is an employer's liability insurance. And uh, that, Mr. Chair, we would like to uh, submit a formal position to detail. On or before April 29th. Right, Mr. Kaiglet. Uh, thank you again, Ms. Chair. Uh, una po, uh, we welcome the bill at uh, napapanahon po talaga na makadagdag ng insurance coverage for our construction workers dahil after mining sa construction na yata talagang maraming namamatay uh, sa uri po ng uh, economic activity at trabaho. Uh, pangalawa po, uh, sana po sa dagdag po na magiging benepisyo na mga maaring maging biktima uh, ng mga aksidente sa construction ay uh, sana po uh, hindi na mahinga ng dagdag na contribution yung mga gagawa dito sa bagong insurance scheme. Dahil nabanggit din naman po kanina ni Senator Tulfo na marami nga sa mga construction workers ang below minimum wage pa ang natatanggap na bayad. So, uh, sana hindi maging additional burden sa kanila, uh, hindi na sila kailangan pang magbigay ng uh, additional contributions. Uh, next point po siguro patungkol po dun sa binabanggit din po ng Department of Labor and Employment na hirap po sila sa pag-monitor ng mga um, construction sites. Baka po kailangan madagdagan po tayo ng mga labor inspectors para po uh, matiyak na mga nagsasabkon na mga sabkon na mga sabkon sa mga construction ay talaga pong nasisiyasat at nakikita po nila yung yung kung up to par yung kanilang standards for safety and health at syempre po sa general labor standards din. And perhaps finally po siguro uh, sa ilalim din naman po ng ating batas on occupational safety and health dapat po talaga may mga OSH plan ang lahat po ng mga empresa, lahat po ng mga enterprises. So sana po uh, sa tulong ng mga employers at ng mga manggagawa, makapagbuo ng OSH plan, ang mga OSH committees na kabilang ang mga manggagawa para po mas maging proactive tayo and we prevent accidents from happening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. King. Let uh, Ms. Jennifer take note of the recommendation of uh, Mr. King. Let to, to provide more uh, labor uh, inspectors para ma-monitor yung... Yes, sir. Uh, duly noted po, sir. All right. Okay. Uh, maraming maraming uh, salamat sa pagputan niyo rito. We will uh, conduct a uh, 
technical working group and meetings to further discuss the uh, details of the bills. And I uh, would like to remind all all of you to please submit your respective uh, position papers uh, on or before April uh, 29. And of course, we will count on your expertise to enable us to pass pieces of legislation that will best serve the uh, interest of our people. Hey, thank you very much for uh, coming over. At wag po sana kayo magsasawa dahil tayo gumagawa lang batas in aid of legislation para pakinabangan ng ating mga uh, iba't ibang sektor ng ating lipunan. Maraming salamat po. Session is hereby, uh, hearing is hereby uh, adjourned.